Shalom, shalom, brother Kadash. We're gonna start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Kai Kadash. That I honor all the brothers in this truth. Spoiler alert, but I had to do it. You know, I had to get into this. You know, this is coming to America. This is the part two. So I had to get into it, you know, because I really liked the first one. And I know a lot of brothers, um, you know, they had watched the first one. They had probably take the little clip out the first one of, you know, when he was in the pool and it seemed like he had multiple wives and stuff like that and be like, look, that's how the kingdom's going to be. So it got me really hyped to watch this second one. But I'm go this is a spoiler alert, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it, you know, from my opinion, they went totally off, you know. So you're going to have to watch it, but they went totally off as suspected, you know, things ain't going to be right in order until we get to the kingdom. And we just got to realize that's just how it's going to be. So this is the spoiler alert. And what happened was pretty much is um, they went through a whole bunch of different stuff. He had a son, you know, that was supposed to take the throne, which matches up with our laws. But instead, you know, um, he had a daughter. So I'll try to think. I'm going to go grab a couple of scriptures, but I'll try to think of how I'm going to get into this. He had daughters, too, but he chose his daughter to take to take the throne instead, you know, which is completely wickedness. And the reason why is because just like his father had the throne before him, his grandfather had the throne, his great grandfather had the throne. That was that same seed being passed down that sat on the throne. But when he puts his daughter on the throne, she takes a husband, right? And that man gets her pregnant. It's going to be another man's seed that's going to sit on the throne. It's not going to be that same royal seed that's sitting on the throne, if you get what I'm saying. So that's the problem with it. And she wasn't fit to take the throne because she, um, in the beginning, she was having problems with him having a son that was going to take the throne because she felt like, she had worked so hard that she should get to take the throne, but it was never told to her that she was going to get to take the throne, you know, but his father, be um, Eddie Murphy, his father before, which his name is a king in this movie, but his father told him, he said, you got a son, you need to find your son, a male heir to take the throne. That's the one wish that he gave before he died. And he disregarded all that just to please woman. And like I said, his daughter wasn't fit to take the throne because she didn't even understand that order. So how can you be fit to sit on the throne if you don't even understand the order and the traditions that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years of the man sitting on the throne? Which proves that you're not even fit anyways. You know, but let me pull a, a scripture to pull that first. I mean, to prove that this is Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 15. It says, if a man had two wives... Well, that's another cut on this movie right there. I mean, you know, the whole getting the one wife thing, you know. And another thing about this movie right right quick is they had women for arranged marriages that was groomed. And they, you know, they was they grew up being trained how to be the perfect wife and take all commanding orders. But just like the first movie in Coming to America, these men, they didn't want those women. So these women wasn't good enough for them. They wanted a woman that they actually fell in love for. And all the women that they actually fell in love for was women that, I ain't going to say necessarily that they was out of order, but they wasn't in, in order as much as the woman that was made for them. You know, and, and it's kind of, it sways our people mind. That's why they put this stuff out there, because to sway our people mind just like with the movie black panther killmonger was trying to set our people free but you think killmonger was the bad guy because they're trying to sway your mind but instead um the black panther guy he wanted to make a covenant with the other nations because that's what he did at the end they were sitting around the un table and they came into agreement and made a covenant covenant with the other nations which we know from reading second maccabees um, no, first Maccabees chapter one, that's a wicked thing. But this is Deuteronomy 21. So we can have multiple wives. It's in our law. This is the Torah. This is the first five books where you find the law at in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 15. If a man have two wives, that means that a man could have two wives. One be loved and another hated, and um, they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, if the firstborn son be of hers that was hated. So if he got a wife, let's just say whatever happened, 
he ended up, you know, not liking her as much, you know, and then he got a, um, another wife. He took a second wife. You know, that's the one he loved. Even though he loved her, if the one that he hate now has his firstborn son, which is the same thing in this movie, his firstborn son was with this woman that he had a one night stand with. And then the woman that he loved had all girls. So if he would have followed this law right here, look, he still, verse 16, then it shall be when he maketh his son to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved first, son or daughter. The firstborn son comes first. It says, before the son um, of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. It says, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him double portion of all that he has. For he is the beginning of the strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So he's supposed to get the right of the firstborn, the son. Now you got cases where the firstborn son, like in the Bible, just like with Esau and Jacob, the firstborn son uh, went off or, you know, um, things happen to where it's not the firstborn son that's chosen. Like Jacob was chosen, um, it was chosen instead of um, Esau. You know, that happens. But at the end of the day, the point is, is that the only ones that's up for the race when you're talking about heir is the son. Just like King David, who took over his throne, King Solomon. And then you had kings, kings, kings after the split to the northern and southern kingdom. You had multiple kings, multiple kings, Jeroboam, Rehoboam that took over the throne. But it was always passed down by man. So when you read in the Bible and you read um, gene genealogies or lineages, is this man begot that man. That man begot this man. This man begot that man. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot the 12 tribes of Israel, which is all men. You see, so that's how that's how this work, you know. Um, here's another one. This is first address chapter four. I'm gonna um start at verse 26. It says, Yeah, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. So he ran out his wits for his wife. You know, that was making a fuss at him because um, because he wanted to give his firstborn son and keep the tradition of his family. If his wife really loved him, she would understand the, the tradition of the family if she really respected it. But he ran out his wits for her and his daughter. You see what I'm saying? Like she kicked him out his room and he couldn't sleep in the bed and he's the king. Of the whole nation, he got kicked out of his room. We ain't never read nothing about King David being kicked out of his room and he can't sleep on the bed. He got to sleep on the couch because his wife got mad, man. That's out of <laughs> man. That's completely fucking out of order, man. So they glorify our woman bucking up against us. They put in the movies because what people gonna watch? Everybody gonna watch the movies, you know, and and learn and learn from the movies, you know. So they glorify, and that was one of the things in the movie. She was kind of glorified for kicking the king out and banishing him from his own room and his own bed because she was mad at him because he didn't do what she wanted. And they kind of try to glorify that moment. Man, it's complete wickedness, and it's going off. Verse 27, many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for a woman. And that's exactly what he did. He erred. He sinned against his father because what was his father um, dying commandment that he gave him? His father gave him a commandment. He said, look, find a son to be the heir of the throne. You have a son that you don't know about. Go get him. Make him heir of the throne. He sinned against his father um, and he going to perish because his seed ain't going. His seed ain't going to be on the throne no more. But he erred. That was the big thing is that he erred. And he said, he told his daughter, you know, I'm going to make you queen. You're going to take the throne after I die. You know, he made his son like ambassador of um, America or something like that. Like what, man? Like he erred. He erred big. He got all that pressure on him, which shows that he wasn't really fit to be king. He got all that pressure put on him by women and he folded. And I'll read it again. First address, chapter four, verse 26. Yet yeah, many there be that have run off their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. 
many also have perished, have erred and sinned for a woman. He made he erred. He made the wrong decision, you know, because the pressure which shows that they wasn't in order. Which goes back to what I said. He had a woman that was going to be in perfectly order for him because, you know, from the first coming to America, the woman that they had arranged to uh, marry him, he told her to bark like a dog and hop. And even in this second version, she was still doing that all those years. When they introduced her back into the second one, she was still barking like a dog, meaning that she kept his order, one order from the first day she... um had a converse, a real conversation with him and got an order from him all the way to tens and tens of years later, she was still keeping that order. Now, that's complete order right there. That's how you build a strong nation. But he didn't want her. He wanted the woman that was going to buck up against him, kick him out, kick him out his um his own room and eventually put so much pressure on him that he erred in keeping the inheritance and the order that's been passed down for years and years and years of a male, a male heir taking the throne. He went against all that. His father probably was turning over in his grave, you know, because another key point in this movie was it was like, what would your mother? Because he went to meet the dude that owned the McDonald's and they had a man to man conversation. He was like, he was like, what would your mother think? And he was like, well, my mother think. And then he went, OK, my mother would do things different because my mother accepted me doing things different. But he didn't think about what his father think because his father told him to find a male heir. He didn't want to worry about that. He wanted to worry about what his mother. So he erred for woman's sake. I mean, there's no way around. I mean, this is a, I mean, this is very, very simple right here. I pull it. Uh, First Corinthians. I mean, shit. Might as well, huh? Let me see. First Corinthians chapter 11. Be ye followers of me, even I also am of um, Yahweh Shai. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances. The ordinances. You got to keep them. He didn't keep them as I delivered them to you. His father delivered them to him in this movie, but he didn't keep it. He disregarded all of it. It says, but I will have you know, man. That the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. You have to keep that ordinance. Paul said, "Man, I, I will have you remember." He he wants you to keep this ordinance because he knew things like this would happen, man. So therefore, he didn't keep that ordinance. He's supposed to keep that same ordinance. You see what I'm saying? In the, in the righteous world, relating it to, you know, the um the body of Yahweh Shai, the Israelite world, you know. But it then it goes in to even get more on the woman, just to show that the man is supposed to be head of a woman. Now, if he put his daughter on the throne and she becomes the queen. So before until she get married, she's the queen. She's gonna have complete dominion over the whole kingdom if he dies now. So she ain't got no man over her. That's complete wickedness, man. Um, let me see. Verse 8. For man is not of a woman, but woman is of man. Right. So who was created first? Man. Man, woman was created. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they keep saying, well, woman, um, woman creates life. Well, man creates life too. I mean, the, the sperm. In the man is a living cell. It's, it's life. The man puts the life into the woman. She can create life. There's no woman that's ever created life without a man. Without sperm. They don't create sperm. Ain't no scientist created some engineered sperm to create babies. That has not happened yet. They still have to take male sperm and put it into a woman or put it into an egg and then create life. You see what I'm saying? They 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 might be able to make artificial eggs, but they can't make artificial sperm. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, they got to get that sperm from some type of man. You see what I'm saying? So you say, well, every every man has a mother. Every every um every um you say every man has a mother. Okay, well, every woman has a father. 
who who was Adam's who was Adam's mother? <laughs> well, you listen to the scriptures and said Eve, she came from Adam. But okay, who was Adam's mother? He was created by the Lord, man. It says, neither was man created for a woman. Mm. This is in the Holy Bible. Y'all say y'all love God. Y'all, y'all know the Lord, right? The Lord mm -hmm. knows y'all heart, right? Well, this is this is his words. This all this is inspired by the Lord. First, first um Timothy 3 16. It says, for man, um, is uh it says, neither was man created for a woman, but woman for men. For this cause ought the woman to have power um on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, you know, neither neither is man without woman, you know, because we do need women to reprocreate and women need us. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. That's why the Lord created both. You know, so we're supposed to be one, you know. But the thing is, is the order, which is Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, man, then woman. I mean, there's just no way around it. Which he he went totally off, but you know this has been a spoiler. Alert. I ain't gonna make this too long. He just aired, and I knew they was gonna put this in this movie because every movie you see when you watch X Men, um, the the main toughest character that that beats Apocalypse is a woman. When you watch Avengers, the main the the strongest character on the Avengers team that comes through and. That's wrecking everything and got this superpower and they all like just marvin at her. It's a woman now. When you um, they it was another movie that I that I used to love too that they had changed it up and they had put like a woman ahead of it. And I was kind of sought about. I forgot exactly what it is, but you could kind of see the trend what they're trying to do because they need to make sure a man isn't in order. They need to make sure our nation isn't in order in order to keep us down. You see what I'm saying? In order to control us. They can't let the man. Same thing like when you go back to Adam and Eve. Eve was out of order. She was completely out of order. And that's why they were able to get those curses put on them. Because through woman sin came in through the earth. Because she was out of order. You see what I'm saying? But he couldn't just. Like the serpent couldn't, couldn't just go straight to. um To Adam. Because he was, he was in order. But through the woman, you know, sin entered the earth. Here, let me see if I can find it. And he has to kiss. Um, I think it's 25. Yeah, he has to kiss chapter 25, verse 24. It says, of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her, we all died. Did it say through Adam came the beginning of sin? No, through the woman, Eve. You know, um, what was I saying too? And then, um, just like when I was saying about Black Panther, since I did mention it, I want to kind of get it to it's, um, how they you see they made a covenant with the heathen nations and all that at the end. It was on the UN table, um, with the movie Black Panther, but really Killmonger was he was going the right way. But they so it just kind of show you how they kind of switch these movies up to kind of program our people, you know, and keep us in error. To keep us in sin. So what happens when they keep us in sin? They could come over us. Here, let me get this real quick, um, so I can find that one. First Maccabees chapter one, uh, verse forty-one. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave their leave his laws. That's what it's about. It's about us leaving our laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king, of course. Yeah, many of the um, Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed him to idols and profaned the Sabbath day. So we stopped following the law because we wanted to be one people with the heathen. Here, let me jump back to verse 11. It says, in those days when all of Israel, wicked men. So any man today talking about we need to be one with the heathen, they just like the man of old. They're wicked men. If they saying this. Who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are around about us. There's no difference. It's the same thing um, since the beginning of time. They were called wicked men then for saying that. They're called wicked men today for saying that. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this um, device pleased them well. And certain of the people were so forward herein 
um, that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. And that's what happens. When you want to be in a covenant and be one with the heathen, you're going to do what the heathen do, you know, and, and what, what's going to happen from that? From us doing what the heathen does and being one with the heathen, this is why they want us to do that. Um, Judas chapter 5, verse 20, it says, Now therefore, my Lord, my governor, if there be any error in this people, so like he erred, like we erred by following the heathen, making covenants with the heathen, being one people with the heathen. Um, and they sin against their God because that's what happened when we make covenants with them. We we profane the high holy days. We sin against the Lord. We keep Christmas. We keep our birthdays. We keep Easter. But we but we won't keep the Sabbath day. We we all not finna keep the Passover. There ain't no big thing where, yeah, of course us that woke up to the truth, we gonna keep it. But I'm just saying, um, the two-thirds of Israel, y'all not finna keep Passover. Y'all not posting on timelines all Passover coming up. Y'all not posting about the Sabbath day. But when Christmas come around or the 4th of July come around or your birthday come around, then it's a big celebration. You see what I'm saying? So that's sinning against the Lord. But it says, let us consider that this should be their ruin. So the other nations, they got to keep us in sin. Because as long as we err and we sin against our Lord, it's going to be our ruin. It says, and let us go up and we shall overcome them. So that's why they program us in these movies to stay in sin, to err in the true way. Why? Because they overcome us and they can stay on top and we can stay where we at right now. At the bottom. But, you know, we got to. We got to wash that stuff. We got to, you know, wash those sins away. We got to wash all that bullshit away and we got to get into the scriptures. And that's where we can get this understanding. And, and by the way, that's for the Apocrypha, which you find in the original 1611 King James Bible. But those couple verses that I read out of there is is um, a couple reasons why they took it out the Bible. Because it gives you the understanding of those things. They don't want people in church reading, okay, we sin and we err against the Lord. They want to tell you, you can sin and do whatever you want now, and you won't be punished for it. They don't want to tell you that it was um, First Maccabees chapter 1, that it was a wicked thing for all people to be one people. And the Israelites to forget they, um, their law, statutes, and commandments and follow the heathen. That's a wicked thing. They don't want to tell you that because that's exactly what these churches is telling you, you know, so that's why they took it out pretty much. Yeah. The book of Maccabees, both books, first address, second address, first address exposes who will be ruling the earth at the end, which is Esau. Um, and then you put two, two together. Who's ruling the earth right now? Well, those are the Edomites. So those are some of the reasons why they took it out. But going back to this, you know, overall it was, um, it was a funny, it was a nice movie. I, I say it was a good movie, you know, but, the concept of it is what got me and moved me and put the spirit on me to make this. So I ain't going to make it too long. I'm going to say, hopefully this has been edifying, you know, um, shalom, salvation to the blood.